Um, from my personal experience, I would say that a combination of intravenous NAD plus combined with oral nicotinamide mononucleotides um, seems to yield the best results. And that brings us to nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN, one of the more expensive supplements in this mitochondrial support stack, but it's essential to run it because this is where I notice the most amount of benefits. If you only have to choose one supplement in this stack, it would be NMN based on my personal experience and the experience that I've had with all of my clients, my wife, and everybody that I've talked to. Now, in the anti-aging community, there's a huge debate between what is more effective, nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mononucleotides. One of the key arguments is that NMN needs to be converted into NR before it can permeate the cell membrane, after which it converts back into NMN. That's because the structure is actually quite similar. NMN has an added phosphate group compared to NR, which increases its molecular size. Um, so some scientists believe that NMN is too big to permeate into the cell membrane and others say that it's no issue. And that's why they believe in NR supplementation instead, because NR gets phosphorylated into NMN before NAD plus biosynthesis occurs. So some scientists say that you only need NR. Other people say that you need NMN because it's the direct precursor of NAD+. I experimented with both various different brands. Every time I took NR up to 1200 milligrams per day, I got a minute effect compared to a low dose of NMN. Now I've supplemented between 250 to 1000 milligrams of NMN per day. That's either with NAD plus administrations or without it. And I can say that NMN by far, by far is a lot more potent regarding overall energy levels and overall sense of well-being and the productivity um, aspect of this mitochondrial support stack compared to NR at any dose. So you can take my personal experience and, and that I have with some of my clients that NMN is far superior compared to NR. Again, this NMN, NR, and NAD plus field of anti-aging is a huge minefield, I would say. Um, a lot of hidden agendas, a lot of these anti-aging clinics which um, have their own preferred practice because they can mark up the NMN or the NR or the NAD plus quite substantially. Luckily, NMN is at least available as a supplement, but NAD plus, which we'll get into a little bit later, that's very hard to come by and, and ridiculously expensive. So if you can't afford NAD plus, a higher dose of nicotinamide mononucleotide upwards of a thousand milligrams per day is certainly going to be beneficial. Now, NMN is a nucleotide derived from nicotinamide ribosides or vitamin B3 niacin. Apparently, NMN converts into NAD plus within minutes of ingestion. So multiple doses per day are generally recommended. Personally, I take 175 milligrams NMN with each meal over the day. And if you decide to go with, it can actually afford intravenous NAD plus administrations on a weekly basis, or you have access to Mod C, which is the mitochondrial derived peptide, which we'll discuss in this video, or 5-amino-1-MQ, which is a nicotinamide N-methyltransferase inhibitor, which prevents the breakdown of nicotinamides. So the NAD salvage pathway stays sustained. If you can combine all of these, you'll need less nicotinamide mononucleotides compared to running NMN solo. So the daily dosages of NMN could range anywhere between 500 milligrams to 1000 milligrams. I even know people that run 2000 milligrams NMN per day because that's their sweet spot. Again, they don't take NAD plus mod C or 5-amino-1 MQ. So throughout this entire process, you'll have to experiment a little bit either with NMN, building up the dosages, then maybe switching for NR further down the line and see which dose and which compound actually gives you the best effect. I would advise still everybody to supplement with a B50 vitamin complex to get adequate amounts of B vitamins in because you need these B vitamins to help with carbohydrates, fat, and protein metabolism, which ultimately contribute or acquire NAD plus to fulfill all the biological functions that contribute to overall energy levels and sense of well-being. So again, a little bit of experimentation is required here or there. It's going to cost you a decent amount of money to actually figure that out. But once you figure it out, all you need to do is follow that protocol through and you should feel pretty freaking good the entire duration that you're running this mitochondrial support stack. These supplements are purely there to increase NAD plus levels. So that also means you need to increase your overall antioxidant profile. You can do that with injectable glutathione or N-acetylcysteine, which converts into glutathione downstream. You can combine that 
with SEM-E, S-adenosyl-L-methionine, which is a supplement that increases glutathione content within the liver specifically. Now, again, you don't know how much NAC converts into glutathione. You don't know how much SEM-E contributes to liver to glutathione content within the liver. This is always the difference between supplemental form, um, relying on the body to convert that into the compound or um, metabolic pathway that you want, compared to injectable NAD plus or injectable glutathione. So for me personally, having experimented with all of the supplements by themselves and experimenting with the supplements as well as the injectable routes, I would say that a combination is highly beneficial. But of course, that's not for everybody because not everybody wants to inject um, intravenous NAD plus or intravenous injectable glutathione or subcutaneous carnitine or MOTC, which we'll discuss a little bit later. So that's entirely up to you. Um, from my personal experience, I would say that a combination of intravenous NAD plus combined with oral nicotinamide mononucleotides um, seems to yield the best results. NAD plus concentrations are the highest within the mitochondria themselves, constituting anywhere between 40 up to 70% of the total amount of NAD plus which is present within the cells. The mitochondria use a specific membrane transport protein to diffuse NAD plus over the mitochondrial membranes and then keep it there for energy production. Intercellularly, NAD plus has a half-life of approximately one to four hours, whereas within the mitochondria, it has a half-life between four to six hours. Oxidized NAD plus and reduced NADH, phosphorylated NADP and in reduced phosphorylated NADPH are all essential for enzymatic reactions, metabolizing one biological molecule into another one. Without NAD and its four constituents, enzymatic reactions would not be possible. So as you get older, supplementing with NMN or NR or NAD+, intravenous administrations becomes even more essential compared to at a younger age, at which point you kind of feel that you're unbreakable anyway. But as you get older, all those enzymatic reactions and all these uh, ATP synthesis metabolic pathways um, seems to downregulate. And if you want to keep that going, NMN supplementation, NR supplementation, or NAD plus supplementation, highly beneficial. That could be anywhere between 250 to 500 milligrams NAD plus on a weekly basis or 250 milligrams NAD plus IV twice a week. On the lower end, you could even do 125 milligrams NAD plus intravenously once or twice per week. That's already better compared to taking nicotinamide mononucleotide in supplemental form at very high dosages, let's say 1,000 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams per day. Because again, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is what you want. The nicotinamide mononucleotide or nicotinamide riboside are just building blocks for the NAD plus that you're going to need to fulfill all of these enzymatic reactions and contribute to ATP synthesis within the mitochondria. So I would say that it's essential, but it's also highly expensive and not available everywhere. I'm in a very luxurious position where I have access to NAD plus from a clinic or a pharmacy or a hospital at the highest quality I can get here in Thailand. I have a private nurse who administers 250 to 500 milligrams NAD plus on a weekly basis. But again, if you have to go to an anti-aging clinic or a hospital to get this done, you might get set back between $150 to $250 per administration. Now, it usually includes the service, the 500 milliliters normal saline solution, and all of the injection material that you're going to need for IV administrations. Many of the clinics, as what I do myself, I combine NAD plus with injectable glutathione or amino acids, vitamin C, B vitamins. Some people prefer to combine that with injectable carnitine because, again, they don't like the uh, subcutaneous carnitine administrations on a daily basis. So they just do that intravenously once or twice per week. So again, this IV cocktail is entirely up to you, what you can source, um, what options they offer at the clinic or the hospital where you're doing these IV administrations. And again, if you're doing it yourself and you can source all of these drugs um, individually or in combination through a reliable uh, reseller, so to say, um, yeah, the costs are still going to be up there. So Keep that in mind, if you go the IV administration route, it could add another 700 to maybe even $1,100 to your monthly mitochondrial support stack bill. 